Hello, everybody, and welcome to this new webinar uh, from Fake 2 This one is, is, is going to be presented by Joao. I think most of you know Joao. He's presented as well a previous uh, webinar in, in this series. Uh, he's a vet. Uh, he's uh, working in, in the Donkey Sanctuary, and he's going to explain by now what he's going to, what the presentation is going to be about. Just remind you, please, uh, to keep the microphones off all the time. And if you if you have any questions, you can use the chat. And and then at the end of the presentation, we'll answer all the all the questions you might you might have. Okay. And as well, if you want to turn your cameras off while he's doing the presentation, that will as well reduce the disturbance of the images on the on the screen. Thank you very much, and Joao, please. Thank you, Sesc. Hello, everyone, and welcome to this new FACT webinar. Today, I'm here on behalf of the, the Dunkey Sanctuary, and I'm going to share with you the results of a research project that we developed over the last uh, three years. I'm going to share my screen now. Tell me when you can see it, uh, the blue screen. Can you see it? Yep. Yeah, 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 perfect. Okay, perfect. So uh, basically, uh, what I'm going to talk with you today is some of the, the results of this research project. As, as I told you, we, we developed this research project, and there was a key question that we have that is pretty much, what is a good color for them? Okay, so uh, we know that if there is a common aspect that is common to all the working aspects that are used as uh, traction animals is the use of a harness. Uh, and especially, we can talk also, if we use the animals are using spec saddles, we talk about uh, the, the saddles, right? But when animals are using for traction purposes, the color is a key element. And when we try to understand a, a good definition of what is a good color, well, this definition that I'm going to tell you was from Dr. Anne Pearson, a researcher from the University of Edinburgh, that back in 2003, she described the good harness as being the one that efficiently transmits the animal's energy while being padded so that the force is spread over a large area and it fits well, not causing skin lesions or trauma. Well, this definition is the perfect definition for what should be a good collar. So our key question here is, now that we more or less understand how a collar should be, what is a good collar for them? Because unfortunately, and those of you who are more or less familiar with the working equids reality in many parts of the world, poor working conditions and poorly designed ill-fitted harness are actually the main cause of skin lesions, are a main cause of welfare issues, uh, issues and they are usually responsible for an inefficient transfer of energy. And that usually leads to uh, serious health problems, skin wounds, uh, scars, and if, if we look to some of the recent publications where studies coming from such a different places such as Tanzania or Nepal or Egypt or Pakistan, talking about different working environments and working conditions, actually these studies, they show a very high prevalence of uh, skin lesions. And this was directly linked with not only poorly designed, but also incorrect use of equipment. So here we have, let's say, two separate situations. We may have harness that's although they are uh, well designed, they have an incorrect use. And in some of the cases, such as the one in this picture, we are actually talking about poorly designed harness, okay? And then in other places, what we see is a little bit like this picture, these donkeys are from Tanzania. We see the adaptation of equipment primarily designed for other species. For example, these animals are using a cattle yoke, and that's a common situation in many parts of the world, but also, we see, even in, in some of the European countries, we still see this reality that if a donkey is smaller than a horse, if we just reduce the size of a horse collar, that should fit the donkey. So, and in, in these cases, sometimes we see problems because people, they didn't take into account when we talk about the, um, the specific anatomy of, of donkeys, and that's an issue, okay? so. In this study, and keeping all this in mind, we decided to carry out this research project where we took seven different colors uh, and we used pressure pads. So we use a lot of technology. These pressure pads, we'll see some pictures further ahead, but these pressure pads, I'm sorry, there is a 
it's a mistake here. Um, basically, we have you, you, you place these pressure pads in between the collar and the body of the animal. And we have collar one, collar two, and collar three. These were prototypes. We'll see all these pictures in detail, but just for me to introduce you the collars. We have collar one, collar two, and collar three. Those prototypes were specifically designed and prepare for donkeys, or at least what we thought that should be a good collar for donkeys. And by saying this, we kept in mind the specific anatomy of donkeys. That was a key issue. Then collar four and collar five were commercial full collars uh, used for horses. Okay. Uh, here we have a non adjustable collar, number four. And then we have number five. Just let me put the laser, that will help. And then number five is an adjustable full collar. And then Number six and number, seven, and number seven, we have two commercial breast collars, uh, keeping in mind that especially number six, the straight breast collar is, uh, I believe, the most common collar used all around the world by uh, working animals. Okay, so talking about these three prototypes, the ones we have, one of the reasons why we create these prototypes is because, is because of the fact that donkeys, they have these anatomical differences in fat distribution and neck, I'm sorry, and neck morphology. So when we see a donkey, actually, we, if we see the shape of the neck, if we cut the neck of a donkey here, the shape will be much more like an eight shape with this fat area on the top of the neck. Then we have this depression, and then we have a more or less normal neck if we compare with the horse. Well, in a horse, if we cut it in the same area, what we have is like this elliptical shape, this egg shape, okay? And apart from that, donkeys, they have a, a very narrow chest because first they have a very deep trachea when compared with horses and the point of the shoulders, the scapular humeral joint is not only very bony in donkeys, but is also very high up when we compare with the trachea and when we compare with horses. So these first three colors, they actually took this into account. So this was column number one, one of the prototypes where we have this fence post, okay? One of the ideas of these prototypes, at least number one and number two, was try to create something that could be replicable in, in different parts of the world and that has a, a lower cost because the initial idea was if these prototypes were actually good as we thought they, they were, we want these to be replicated in different parts of the world, okay? So this prototype is, is actually an adjustable collar. As you can see, we have this strap that works as a vertical adjustment. We can move up and down into the neck. And then we have this horizontal adjustment, these straps that work as an horizontal adjustment. We have one on the top and another one on the bottom. And then we have the padding system or the cushion that was screwed into this post hem. Basically, this is a fence post. We, we, we recycle material here. And we have this specific pattern I don't know if you can see these white dots. I'll show you a picture in, in a second. But these specific dots help us to divide and distribute the padding system inside the cushion. And that was something important. Then column number two, here you have the pattern. So this is during the, the, the manufacturing process. Those red dots is where we just place those specific stitches to make sure we divide the padding system for donkeys. Then number two is pretty much the same, but we actually change the type of hames, instead of using this rigid post, we use water pipe, but it was pretty much the same. Number three was an experiment developed by the, the, the harness team that was pretty much uh, Abel Ivanis and Chris Garrett. And it was our version of a brawler for donkeys. And a brawler, brawler, for those that are not familiar, is a combination of a breast collar with a full collar. And in this case, we kept the lower part a little bit like a V-shaped breast collar with the idea, and we'll see that in a second, the idea, the theoretical idea of a, a breast collar with this V shape is to avoid the trachea and to avoid the shoulders. So in theory, it's a, best, a better best breast collar for, for donkeys. And then on the top, we have a more uh, full collar, but as you can see, and especially if you see the picture on the right, we have this eight shape. So in theory, these two halves will fit perfectly the shoulders of the donkey. Then we have the full collars, the commercial, the commercial full collars developed for horses. And as you can see, we have this 
elliptic shape like the neck of a donkey. In this case, is a non-adjustable full collar. This is, although this is a commercial collar, it's, it's the one that was, uh, this is a collar that is very typical in Spain, especially in the, in the Valencia region. And as you can see, this non-adjustable, there is an opening on the bottom, it goes through the top of the neck. And the only adjustable thing that we have here is the hitching point, especially because donkeys and horses, they have different hitching points. So when the harness team built this, this, this collar and manufacture this collar, we ask them to prepare this adjustable hitching point. One of the reasons, and one of the reasons why this collar was included is because for us to test commercial models that were developed for horses, we need to reduce the size of those collars. So actually, this is a collar that Abel um, manufactures a lot, and you have this collar here being used in a draft horse, but Abel managed to reduce the size of that collar, so we have exactly the same model also for, for Dunkey. So that was one of the reasons why we select this collar for our study. And then we have another commercial full collar for horses, in this case, 100% uh, adjustable collar. So we have a, vert a strap that if we open it or close it, keep in mind that the neck goes here. So this is the vertical adjustment of the collar. Then we have these horizontal bars here, one at the top and one at the bottom that allows us to move uh, from outside or inside. So pretty much to tighten or widen the, the, the collar around the neck. And then we also have an adjustable hitching point. So another commercial collar. And this is a model. You can find some French manufacturers that develop similar collars. And this is a model that has been used for years for professionals, both in Spain and in Portugal. Here you see a draft horse. Actually, this is one of my horses using that collar. Uh, a pair of horses using the same collar here. But also we have professionals using mules and using the same collar, and even donkeys using the same collar as well. Okay, so these were color number four and number five. And then we have this synthetic leather straight breast collar as a representation of the most common collar that you can see around the world with the breast strap and the neck strap. And then we have what I, what I told you before, this V-shaped uh, breast collar, in theory, avoiding the critical points by releasing the tracker here and releasing the, the shoulders here, okay? So these were the seven colors that we use. And then we need to take a group of donkeys to test this. So we spoke and in an agreement with the, with the Zamorano Leonese Breeding Association, we took eight healthy Zamorano Leonese donkeys. And the reason why we want donkeys exactly the same or as similar as possible is because we want to minimize the bias of the results coming from the individual differences between donkeys. If there's a steady focus on uh, colors, we cannot test different colors in donkeys that are really different. So by talking and working together with the breeding association, we managed to have animals with the same size, the similar phenotype, the same body condition, etc. Okay. And then in terms of the materials and methods of the study, these donkeys, and here we have an image, donkeys, they were hitched to a sled. Here you have the sled. And uh, we make two transits of 75 meters. And each one of the animals, and we use this uh, uh, smooth cobble yard. And the reasons for that is because it was winter and we don't want, for example, the rain to interfere with the resistance of the sled with the ground. So by having this solid surface, and this is something very Portuguese, the cobble yards are something very typical in Portugal, somehow we solve that, okay? And the animals, we check the, the individual weight of each one of the animals, and the animals pull this sled 20% and 40% of their body weight, okay? In terms of the sled, uh, it's this, you can see you have this frontal post, and here we can play with the angle of draft. It was very important for us to make sure that we tested these colors with the correct angle of draft. So all the colors that rest in the scapula, we kept a 90 degree angle. And for the breast colors, number six and number seven, we moved the hitching points up and we kept 180 degrees or as close as possible to that, okay? And then inside these uh, purple gray covers, what we have is the pressure pads. So this is just the protection of the pressure pads. 
if we work with pool colors, we have one pressure pad on the left. This is marked by the red. So we have one pressure pad on the left side of the collar and another pressure pad on the right. You can see the cables coming from here and link with the computer that was actually registering all this. And then we have also the breast collar. So for the breast collar, we only use one that is uh, marked here in yellow, okay? The important thing here is that these pressure pads, they allow us to see the contact area. If you remember from the definition that we give at the, at the beginning, we want a good collar to have a good contact area with the animals. And it also gives us the pressure. Not only the pressure in the whole collar, like you have, for example, here, but also in what we define as the critical points. And for us, the critical points were the point of the shoulder. It's one of the areas where we see more lesions in donkeys that is pretty much correspond to this area here and also the trachea. Because one of the things we observe in donkeys due to these anatomical features that I mentioned with lower trachea and upper shoulders is that even the breast collars, they do a lot of pressure in the trachea. So they work as there is a, a blockage in the airflow, a mechanical blockage, and that affects the working capacity of the animals, okay? These pressure pads, they have more or less uh, 0.5 square meters, but inside that half a square meter, we have more than 2000 sensors that give us all this information. Then in terms of the 20 and 40% of the body weight, we play with bags of sand and we had big bags, smaller bags. So we managed to play with that. That was pretty much the, the, the material and methods from this study. So we have 20 40%, eight donkeys, seven collars, two transects per collar per donkey and per percentage of body weight. And as you can imagine, this gave us a lot of information. This is just an example of the information we obtained. On the left, we have uh, the reading of one of the full colors. So basically in the blue line, inside the blue line, we, we managed to, to create a specific area from where we want the software to give us the result. For example, the small marks that you see here, this represents the clips that keep the pressure pad in place. So we don't want this to be included. And then if you pay attention here, this is, it was not counting in seconds, it was counting in frames. And you can see, we only count the frames between 45 and 418 in this specific case. Why? Because these are the frames that correspond to the animal moving. So what we did as a way to identify these critical points is when the animal was stopped and ready to start, we use our fingers to press where this critical point was. So you, we knew that the animal was stopped. So the initial frames, we could see the pressure of our fingers. And then we use a square like this to identify, in this case, it was a square of three by three centimeters. And in the case of the trachea on the right, we have the same for a breast collar. And you see the two squares corresponding to the shoulders. And then we have a rectangle of three by 15 centimeters that corresponds to the area of the track. As I said, we eliminate the frames that corresponds to our fingers pressing there, but it allows us to clearly identify in the image where these areas should be. Then we just move the animal and this pretty much gives us a video with all the frames. And at the end, we have the, the results. So on the left here, we have what was for a half of a full collar and on the right, the full image for a breast collar. In terms of the results, and although I'm, I, I try my best to convert all this scientific data into a, a, a lay message. So the first thing we want to check was the area of contact. And of course, we have uh, two halves in the full collar. So the results you see here in square centimeters for collars one to five, is the sum of the left and the right, okay? And here we have 20% and we have 40%. Just look into some of these results. Funny enough, we put color one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and actually they correspond, and that was just a coincidence, to the highest area. So as you can see, color one presented the highest area of contact when pulling both 20 and 40%, followed by number, color number two, and then, so these are the prototypes. Then we have the horse uh, commercial full collars and the breast collars were actually the ones 
who, pre who present the lower area of conflict. Okay, so here we already have some information showing that the full colors, they have more contact with the animal, something that according to that initial definition was desirable, okay? And then from a statistic point of view, when we compare 20% to 40%, we have a significant increase in terms of the area of contact from color one to color five, but we have a non-significant increase in terms of the breast color. So this shows us that these colors, they actually did what was supposed. They were smashed against the body of the animals and they increased the area of contact, but we didn't see that in the breast colors telling us that breast colors have a very limited capacity to expand, okay? When we see more in detail, we see that in the case of color three and color four, so our brawler and, one, and the non-adjustable full color, there is an inversion here. So for 40%, Color four presented a, a higher area of, of contact when we when talking about uh, the 40%, okay? So as you can see, the, the best ones, and for 40%, these two as well. And here, the reason why this happened is that when we look to our brawler, actually, we have these hames, the rigid structure. They were tied on the top with a rope, but they were not tied on the lower part. We only have this leather bridge to keep the two halves in place. So actually what happened is that although the collar on the left, the brawler was specifically designed for donkeys, because the hames were not attached in the lower part, when the animal was pulling 40% of the body weight, what happens is that the collar was actually bending forward. So this brawler was very good for 20%, but when we increased the weight, we lost contact. And that's one of the reasons, well, if we lost contact between animal and color, we reduced the area and the pressure sensors, they register that. So, but the good thing is that when we look to the adjustable, for, the non-adjustable for color design for horses, it is important to understand that sometimes, and this color tells, tells us that, it is not enough to look to the area, to the, to the, to the, total area, because if you look to this color, and if you see the sweating marks of this color, we have a, a darker area here, but actually it's more or less clean in this area. So as you can see, if we adapt a color that was designed for horses, we are going to have this gap that actually corresponds to the, to the specific anatomy of the neck of the donkeys. And something we don't want is to have a lot of contact in the lateral aspects of the animal because animals, they pull with the shoulders. Even if there is a contact in this area, that doesn't mean that we are actually using in an effective way, the energy of the animals. And if you see this picture, you can see that clearly there is a gap there. So here, that's why there was no contact and we have an extra contact here. And if you see the trace, in this case, it's actually the trace that is pushing the collar against the animal, but the shoulder, the scapula is there. So although collar four, specifically designed for horses, gave us a lot of area of contact, that area is not where it sh should be. And this is an important aspect. When we talk about the pressure, so one of the things we look was area of contact. The other thing was pressure, okay? Don't get scared with these numbers. I'll, I'll just try to put this in a very simple way. The first thing I want to tell you is that we measure the pressure for both 20 and 40% of body weight. Here we have 20 and 40%, and then we have the colors, and we check for, let's say, three types of pressure. The most important one here is the mean pressure. And in, in, in a, a mathematical language, the pressure is pretty much the force divided by the area, okay? So this, this tells us that uh, if we have colors like color one to color five, that pretty much they double the area of contact when we move from 20 to 40%, somehow it was expected for us to see that we have no variation in the pressure. And that was exactly what happened. So as you can see, color one, color two, color three, four, and five, we almost don't see variations, or at least the statistics is telling you that it's a, it's a, a non-significant variation. Although when we see color six and color seven, here 
the pressure almost double. And uh, this, it was significant here. And number six presents some similar results. Funny enough, uh, this tells us that because breast collars, they have less capacity to expand, keeping in mind that pressure is force divided by area, if we don't increase the area, when we move from 20 to 40%, we'll increase the pressure. The full collars, because they almost double the area, they manage to keep the, the, the pressure stable, which is great and it's exactly what we want from a good collar. And then when we talk about the peak pressure, peak pressure is pretty much calculated by dividing the highest forces by the area. And this peak pressure is important because uh, it's linked, it's directly linked with the cushioning capacity of the collars. So the capacity that the collars have to deform and to absorb the energy, okay? And then the maximum pressure is pretty much the maximum results of the peak pressure, but we'll not pay attention to that. We'll just focus on the mean pressure and we'll just focus on the, the peak pressure, okay? So, as I said, the fact that these colors one to five were especially color one to, to, to three, uh, but also four to five, all these colors, they have wool, they have natural wool inside, okay? And natural wool has this capacity to expand, to deform, and to adapt to the anatomy of the animals. Of course, color one to color three, because they were designed to make sure that they fit the specific on the anatomy. We even saw that in a, in, a, in a higher scale. Color six and color seven, as I said, we see this higher pressure as a consequence of the lack of expansion capacity. Then in terms of the peak pressure, again, uh, as I said, this is linked with the cushioning capacity. So if we have a greater peak pressure, that tells us that there is a lack of cushioning. And if we have a lower peak pressure, that indicates a better cushioning capacity. So we have a better adjustment for the anatomy. And once again, here we can see that on, on the color six and color five, we see a lot of peak pressure. Curiously enough, the V collar, the one that was supposed, the, the, the V-shaped breast collar, the one that was supposed to be better adapted to the anatomy of donkeys presented higher peak pressure and presented higher mean pressure. And then when we look, this pressure that I just told you was for the whole collar. And then, as I said, we looked into the critical points. And the critical points were the shoulder and they were, it was the trachea. Only collar six and collar seven, the breast collar, touched the trachea. But funny enough, all of these collars touch the shoulder, or there was readings for the shoulder. But collar one, collar two, collar three, collar five, and collar seven, when the animal was standing and not moving, there was no contact with the shoulders. So when we see the initial frames where we put our fingers, the small square, there was no pressure there, there was no marks, but then due to the natural movement of the animal, the shoulder was actually touching the collar. Okay, and this is also uh, important. But these pressures, these results, when we look to the critical points, they tell us nothing. We need to compare the pressure of the critical points with the whole pressure under the collar. Okay, of course, in ideal conditions, we don't have any type of contact with the critical points, so there was no pressure there. But the study shows us that even those collars that were specifically designed to don't touch the shoulders, there was a contact. So what we did is that we compare, we compare the, the, the whole pressure with the pressure in the critical points. And if there is this contact in the critical points, we want to make sure that this pressure in the critical points is lower than, or at least the same as the whole collar pressure. That will be a good indicator for um, a good collar, okay? And as I said, in terms of pressure, this collar, the V shape, was actually the one showing more pressure, especially in the track. If you go back, please compare number seven, that goes from 0 0.1 up to 0 0.22. The collar, the, the, the breast collar that was in theory designed 
to avoid contact with the trachea as soon as we increase a little bit the, the, the effort of, of the animal by moving 40%, it doubles the normal breast color. And to be fair, we realize that what happened is that this V shape is very beautiful and stays very well adapted to the animal. But when they start pulling, we see this V shape stretching, trying to become more like a, 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 a straight breast color. And we saw a twist of this. And actually, the central area was going straight into the, the, the track. So if we need to select a breast color for donkeys, and if we don't have any other option, these studies show that actually uh, a, a straight breast color eventually with a small cut here to release the trachea is better than this V-shaped breast color. And that was somehow uh, unexpected, right? Because these V-shaped breast colors were announced as a, a good solution for these animals. Well, these this studies show that that was not the case, okay? In terms of the prototypes, these colors, both of them, they have an higher pressure in the whole color when, compa when compared with the critical points. So although there was some pressure under the, the critical points, it was not significant and it didn't have any uh, problem for, for the animal. Okay, so when we compare these two, actually what both were efficient, but what we realized is that when we work with 40% of the body weight, the water pipe somehow bended. So uh, the selection of the materials was another important aspect that came out of the study. We need to make sure that the hames are really a rigid uh, part of the collar because these ones were more flexible and we saw uh, the, the collar one with the rigid hames of wood um, perform better than the number two with this water pipe. So again, this, the, compar the comparison of these two colors shows that the selection of the material is really important. Then, in terms of these brawlers, uh, this shows us that it is okay for light work, but as soon as we start working with this, uh, with, with heavy work, at least with this model where the hames are not connected at the bottom, we will see, we will see problems. So uh, at least this specific model, model is not uh, advisable for animals that are going to do uh, heavy work, okay? Then in terms of the collars design for horses and the adaptation of these collars for uh, donkeys, I have to say that both of these collars, they perform well. They have a higher pressure in the whole collar when compared with the, the, the critical points, which is great, but Specifically, collar number five has a much better results for the critical points. Why? Well, basically because if we compare collar five and collar six, sorry, collar five and collar four in contact with the animal, here, the, the area of the shoulder is clean and just touch from time to time, while in here, it's always in contact. Although, again, the fact that these collars, both of them, they have wool inside, and they show a great capacity to expand and to absorb the, en the energy. Uh, here, uh, the contact was higher, but it was not problematic, okay? So, but again, if we need to adapt existing colors that were developed for horses and you want them for donkeys, we need to make sure that these color colors are adjustable, especially because with this color number five, the fact that it was completely adjustable and the fact that the padding system was thicker at the top and it was narrow in the, in the, in the bottom allow us two things. First, here to avoid the shoulders, which is great. And here, because of this uh, deformation capacity of the wool, somehow it was smashed against the animal and that defect, well, let's call it a defect, this an anatomic characteristic that tongues have in the neck was able to be uh, covered. So these two were actually the best two colors for them. The main reason, and they are not that different if we think that they are both adjustable in terms of vertical adjustment and horizontal adjustment. They both have a rigid, a rigid structure for the hames. They both have a, a, a padding material inside, in this case it's wool, that is really adaptable to the animals. But 
the key difference here is that the one on the right costs 20 times more than the one on the left, okay? And one of the ideas of this project was try to develop a color that can be replicated using local materials and at a low cost. So this color, color number one, was actually our uh, selection at the end of this study. Here you can see some details. Let me just see if I can, if I can play this video. Give me one second. There we go. So on the left, you see the color number five adjusted to the animal. And on the right, you see color number one. As you can see, in both of them, the track here is completely loose, all of them adjustable. Here you can see the horizontal adjustment on the top. Then you can see the vertical adjustment over there behind. And as you can see, in both of them, there's no gap. And in both of them, the points of the shoulder is clean. Okay, so these two actually were in the in the case in the one on the on the right, and I'm just placing here. We managed that by screwing the the two corners into the into the stick. Okay. So from since we 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 came with this um, since we came with this uh, prototype, we actually tested a lot. This is one of my donkeys working in, in, in forestry work and the color performed extremely well. It's been, it's been great to see this color in actually, zero problems with the animal, no lesions, which is absolutely great. So as part of this project, we actually develop, or we are developing right now, a step-by-step -step manufacturing process of this color for donkeys and mules. This is just a screenshot of our uh, Canvas platform. If you search online for Dunkey University, sorry, Dunkey Academy, you will find more information. The Dunkey Sanctuary has this project and developed these online training courses. And the idea of this course is for people who would like to manufacture themselves this color. There is a, a, an explanation step by step of how to do it. We test it in, in, in Galicia and in Valencia as well. This, for now, this, call, this course is in Spanish, but it's going to be translated into English. And these are the and next weekend it's going to be tested again uh, as well in Catalonia. And these are the students of this workshop. I just want to tell you that from all these seven students, uh, six students, any of them ever try to manufacture a color, and this is the result after one day. So they have access to the videos where we explain step by step. And at the end of the day, this was the result, and they managed to build their own colors, which I think is absolutely great. And here you have just the reference of this paper where you can find, if you check for color pressure mapping and evaluation of seven color types used on working donkeys in Europe, this is the, publish, the, the paper we published in the VET record in 2021, where you can see all these tables in detail. And that was pretty much what I want to share with you. I hope it was clear and I hope, uh, you manage to follow all this information. The take home message is that if we keep the design, if we keep the specific anatomy of tankies, and if we play with the correct materials for the hames, for the padding system, and for the padding material, we actually can develop a very good color for donkeys at a very low price. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Joao. I don't know if you have any questions, uh, the people who are attending to the webinar. I I have one myself because I'm one of the ones that's trying to <laughs> going to try to make the color next next weekend. The the, the question is about the the durability. Uh, mm -hmm. You've been testing, I see, it uh, quite intensively. You no, know, the one you you mm -hmm. produced. Uh, could you tell us uh, for how long you've been using it and um, yep. Yep. how is it that's going? That's a very good question, Cesc. Uh, as part of this, I'm just going to start by, by the end. As part of this uh, course, one of the things we included is how to look after your color, okay? And that's a key aspect. It really doesn't matter how expensive your color is or your material is. If you don't look after your material, uh, that will be destroyed first. But worse than that is that it can cause lesions to the animal if it's not well clean or well kept, okay? so. Uh, this is this is a, just a note because this the, the, the time a caller will be available for you, 
it really depends on the way you look after that. Okay, uh, this this color uh, I'm not working on a daily basis, but I'm working on a weekly basis with this color. Okay, and just during the test, the amount of hours we tested because that the one the the, the study we showed you was phase one of the project. From there, we took color number one, color number five, and color number six. Let's say the best of each one of the groups, the best prototype, the best full color, and the best pressed color. And we took it into action uh, while logging, because we want to, to end, and we tested different logging methods. Luis from Mexico, he was involved in that. And I think at the end of the week that we tested this, these colors, we did 42 kilometers with each one of these colors. So, you know, there was an, an intensive test. And I have to say something. The Dunkey Sanctuary, as a welfare charity, of course, we, we didn't push to the limit. These percentages, 20 and 40%, they, they may not represent the reality out there, but they were enough to give us information about the, the, the effort. At my place, on an individual uh, basis, working with my animals, it's somehow the real world. If I need to move a bigger log, animals are helping with that. Maybe I need to bring two, dun two donkeys or I need to bring a, a vehicle. But to be fair, this color is being pushed quite a lot. Of course, it's been, a, 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 we are still testing it, but I have to say, and you know, I'm, I'm very picky with the welfare of my animals. So I check every day I finish to work, I check my animals to make sure that there's nothing wrong. And, and to be fair, I, I didn't see any problem. Okay, the, if there is a, a weak point, the weak point can be, for example, in the hitching point, the friction between uh, the collar or the trace and the canvas. So for example, in the second prototype, that is the one we prepare with a bell recording it, we already have a piece of leather in between the, the canvas and the trace. Okay, but if you look after your collar, uh, I can tell you that it can work for many, many years. There are some Thank questions you, in the... Yeah, there's, I think, one you know, from Claudia, but it's, I think it's quite similar. Okay, so there's, there's a question here from... Let me see. Uh, let me see. Claudia was saying mm -hmm. durability is the same. Okay. Okay, Claudia is asking pretty much about color one and color five. Okay, mm -hmm. I'm working with both at home. And to be fair, I don't see uh, the differences. Okay, and uh, the question is that one of the key aspects of this color is that we want it to be replicable and you want it to be uh, made by local people. Color five is more complex to build. Okay, I'm, I'm not entirely sure that even if I prepare a do-it-yourself video with instructions for color five, people will be able to, to make it at least at the same level we saw in this workshop that we prepared. We need to keep in mind that people that were involved in this in Valencia and in Galicia, they are equity owners. They are not harness makers. They have, they have zero knowledge in terms of manufacturing stuff. Some of them, were even very limited in terms of uh, manual skills to build things. And at the end of the day, the harness or the colors were complete. Okay. So color five is interesting, but is not affordable for the vast majority of people working with working animals. Okay. But it allows us to, to see that if we need to adapt colors that comes from a horse into a donkey, it needs to be adjustable and the shape of the padding system matters. Okay, I think okay. Uh, Mathilda has raised the hand to ask something. I suppose she can turn on the microphone and ask the question herself. Yeah. And then we need to go back to the chat. Exactly. Thanks, Jerome, for a really great talk. I really enjoyed reading this paper actually when it came out. And I think um, I find the curiosity of the, of the V shaped breast collar, I was really surprised about. And I think that's really useful knowledge too. But I, Me too. I have. <laughs> <laughs> I have a couple of questions. I know you said that um, you're piloting the course to, to build this prototype in Portugal and Galicia, but um, has the prototype itself been piloted yet in sort of lower income communities where you might work with the donkey sanctuary? 
um, not yet. Or not yet. Not so yet. you don't not have yet. any other feedback in terms of perhaps how that's received in terms of the practices and ties in with the no. durability and so on, but um, not yet. Okay. No. The only thing we did is that from the group of the initial group of students who tested this, the only person that actually, apart from Abel, who helped me to record the videos, the only person that was uh, that is a professional harness maker is Luis, that is here with us from our team in Mexico. So I also asked Luis about his professional opinion, and we asked Luis to give us a quote for the real price of this collar in a country like Mexico, because it may be the easy to buy leather or to buy canvas in Portugal or in Spain, but maybe extremely difficult in another part. Okay, as part of this training course. Every time there is a, a, a chance to play with different materials, we're adding that. Okay. For example, when we talk about the use of canvas, at the you explain all the nine steps: cutting the canvas, stitching the canvas, filling the canvas, blah blah blah. And at the end, there is the exact same video using a recycled pair of jeans. So, just from cutting two pieces of uh, an old pair of jeans, denim, you know, natural material that you can find that you can recycle. You can actually have exactly the same rectangle that you can fill with the padding material that you have available and you'll have something very similar. So we try our best to reduce costs. With Luis, for example, the leather strap that we use in the, or, or in the vertical adjustment is the, the leather is the most expensive part of this color. Okay. And we try, for example, to play with truck webbing, but because of the nylon material, as soon as you cut it in a longitudinal way, it's, it starts getting loose. So, for example, we are trying to do a hole through the stick and just put the rope protected with a hose. But you know, it's all these are our tests. What's what from from the conversations I have with Luis, it was interesting to for, for me to hear from him that people in Mexico, because in many areas they are used to a full color, it would be more or less easy to change. I think the biggest challenge is when you have people that they're only used to the pressed collar and they may need to change their mindset. The culture it is. Yeah, yeah. But it's, it, you know, it's, to be fair, when the, the guys that came from Galicia, they have a huge lack of knowledge because the only information that they found was actually coming from old harness system, traditional ones that usually they came from mules or bigger horses and then they tried to adapt it to donkeys. So, what we think that happens on the, only in developing countries with people, actually it's, it's next door, you know, this, this lack of knowledge. So even if it will take us longer to reach these working equities in developing countries, just the fact that we are doing this here, we are already helping a lot of animals because the fact that the traditional knowledge was lost between generations and we have these new users trying to start working with animals, it's very interesting to see that they have zero knowledge and they don't know where to find it. So uh, this is this is where we are. Hopefully, very soon, both the English and the Spanish uh, courses will be ready and people can start using it. Thank you. Okay, we have several questions as well. In okay, the... there's a question from Sophie. It says, thank you very much for your presentation. It's very interesting. I'm a French researcher and I'm interested in the locomotion of the hand. Okay, very good question. We didn't check, we did some parallel trials, okay, when we did this. And one of the things was try to put some marks into the joints of the dengue and record in, in slow motion, but we didn't go deeper into this, okay? So we the only thing we rely here was on the expertise of the team that was, that was uh, directly linked to this project, the harness makers and myself, okay? And what it was clear, for example, is that some of the, let's say, the empiric observations we saw during the trials, we saw that the animals was actually, were actually struggling more and there's, there's an important aspect. All these animals, they rest at least one hour in between trials, okay? So the, the fact that there was an animal moving in a slightly abnormal way, uh, it was not linked with the fact that the animal was tired or that was lame. There was a, a continuous uh, look after lameness and things like that. But when we're testing, for example, the V-shaped collar with 40% of the body weight, the animal slightly changed the way they, they were walking. And that was because the pressure on the trachea and the fact that they were looking for a kind of defensive position, okay? And again, 
we were testing with 20 and 40 percent of the body weight. So we, of course, we can stipulate and escalate this into the real world when we see a donkey pulling his own body weight. Okay, uh, but that's that's even with the, with a straight breast collar. Uh, you know, it's it's the, this these collars they have the fact that they have the clean track. Here, at least there is no uh, blockage in in there. Okay, and. Uh, of course, if you just take these colors and put it in a, a different breed of donkey, maybe you will see different ways of the animal to move. But that's why we took donkeys that were pretty much all the same, right? We need to reduce the bias from the from the donkey size and just test the, the colors. But we didn't check the locomotion. No. And she asks as well if, if you measure the, the effort with the heart, the heart rate. Okay, yeah. Yep, we did that not in this study, but in the phase two. Okay, uh, we measure the heart rate, and we also measure while the animals were working in the forest. The second phase, where we test color one, color five, and color six, was pretty much to understand how these colors perform while doing real life stuff. And for that, we chose direct pull. So the animals were pulling logs of known weight from the lighter one that corresponds more or less to 10% of the body weight up to 33% of the body weight in a known distance using direct pull, pretty much dragging the log, using a sled and using vehicles. So everything was on wheels. We use GPS location and we use the heart rate. Okay. And we, we didn't see those differences, significant difference in terms of the heart rate. But I have to be fair, and we use the heart rate to prove that actually the effort was a physiological effort because all the animals without exception, even while pulling with the wrecked pull, the heavy logs, they came back to normal heart rate within the next five minutes of finishing the, the effort, okay? And that is, this is what is expectable. If you ask me to run from here to the next 500 meters, I can tell you that at the end of the 500 meters, my heart rate would be 100. That is not a problem. The problem is that if after half an hour, my heart rate is still at 100, right? It's, it's, there's, a, there's a physiological response from the effort and then the animals, they, they recover, okay? But we didn't see, again, the idea of this study was to test all this, right? Now we need to move into the real world and probably need to put the halter system in an animal that works for eight hours nonstop and check for these, these differences. What I can tell you from the empirical experience again, at least with color one and color five, that are the ones that I'm using at home, animals are completely comfortable working with that. More questions on the, the chat? We have a question as well from Pascal. If there okay. was uh, any initial pressure on the sensor before starting pulling, and if, if so, if you remove yep. them from the measures you were giving. Yep. So all these pressures, there, there, there is a, an option that is called the calibration. So it's a little bit like the, the, the weighting machine. As soon as you put it in place, because you have to think that you just put donkey one, color one, 20%. Then you just bring to donkey two, color two, 20%. But the pressure pads were the same. So there was a calibration that zeroed the, the pressure pads from as soon as you put everything in place and you bring the animal from the, the, the place the, where we're inside the, the, the hangar, bring out when everything was ready in the computer, we just press uh, reset. And from there, it's when the frames started. So actually we pressed the shoulders, but we are not able to press the track here because it was covered with the breast collar. So we are actually pressing the, the, the top of the external because with that triangle, we are able to understand where the track is. So we pretty much play with the anatomical marks of the animals to decide where it was. So pressure on both shoulders, and you could perfectly see in the images, going red, press the, the, the sternum, and then as soon as the animal starts moving, it's when we start counting the real frames for the sternum. So even not the digital pressure was not included in there. Again, trying our best to delete every possible noise that may affect the results. Yeah, hey, I will have, uh, I don't see any more questions here. But there's a comment, yeah, more. there's from Tamara. Ah, can you tell us that. about the alternative materials that can be used instead of food? Okay, very good question, Tamara, thanks for that. It's, we need to, the, the study told us that the material needs to be 
uh, that needs to have ex capacity to expand, okay, and to shape to the and to shape to the body of the animal, because this is not like a balloon with water that you press, you see the formation, and as soon as you release the pressure, it goes back to the initial position. That's why, as part of this course, for example, we explain how people should adjust the collar and how people should work for the first couple of days to make sure that this is adjusted to the body of the animal. A little bit like you don't buy a, a new pair of shoes and you go to run the marathon because you'll have problems, right? So we want these materials that have this deformation capacity. Wool is a good option. Uh, for example, if you just have, how do you call it from the rice, you know, the skin of the, the rice? I don't know the, the English word. Someone maybe help me. From, I, you know, I know what you mean, but I don't know how it's called. It's, it's called rice husk. Mm. Came to my mind, rice husk, okay? We mm. tested that in Galicia because, for example, in very humid places like Galicia, the wool is a problem. It's a problem because if you work from today, a uh, full day, tomorrow the collar will still be wet. And we don't want to put a wet collar in the animal. So it, the canvas will dry very fast, but wool inside will somehow suck the sweat. Although the rice husk doesn't do that. So for more humid places, the rice husk is an option. Uh, in some other places, you can play you know, with, with straw, with smashed straw, with very chopped straw. It will work as well. Uh, or as soon as it's a natural fiber, okay? Some people propose the use of recycled clothes, but uh, it, we need to make sure that it's completely shredded. So it's very small pieces. And keep in mind that as part of the clothes, you may have buttons, you may have zippers. So please make sure that if you decide to use that, but it's, it's, it's because it happened in the past, you know, is you just cut everything and you forgot about these or about, and suddenly there is a hard piece inside the, um, inside the, the collars. And that's a very good question. This is here. Could collar one be adapted for other equines? Okay, very good question. As part of this course, we made some measurements, okay? So we, we, we did two things in this course. The one was based on the normal uh, size of the withers that the donkey sanctuary uses. You have the miniature donkeys less than 95%. The standard donkey from 96 to 150 large from 160 to 148 and giant donkeys. You can play with that and you create some tables where you actually have the, both dimensions of the pole and the, the cushion because it's actually the, the only things that change in a collar is the size of the pole, the hem, and the size of the pattern system. But then we went even further and if you measure the base of the neck, then there are some very basic maths that you can do because the length of the padding should be 90% of the base of the neck. So if you have one meter, just it's a massive animal, but you have 50 centimeters of neck, 50 by 0 0.9 gives you the length of the padding. Then in a, in a, to keep the proportion, the width of the, the padding should be 57% of the length. Again, just have one plus 0 0.57 and the pole should be 1.5 times the size of the neck. And with that, you can pretty much fill the collar for every animal. The only thing that change is the way you stitch the pattern. So you create, you create the pattern system, you put the filling material in there, and then you have these individual stitches that allows you to play with the filling material. We have vertical stitches and horizontal stitches. If you're going to prepare something for donkeys, we start with the vertical one, divided 60 and 40%, so you push more padding material into the back. So then when you fold the last corner, you make it bigger to fill the gap of the neck. If you are going to work with animals, what we call straight necks or horse type neck, that it's this heck shape with very big scapulas, you pretty much do the same, but you start with the horizontal one. So we just break the padding system into three uh, thirds, and then you play with the others. So all this is in the, in, in the course, it will be released soon. But this, and that was something that we had to work because originally it was for donkeys, but now what we realize is that there are mules and horses, especially in developing countries and where the owners face exactly the same problem. They cannot find the color. So uh, it, it was, all this process was very creative, very inventive and really allow us to, to play a lot until we reach these this conclusions. But, you know, we are pretty confident that the color works uh, really well.
and it's easy to replace, it's easy to repair, and those are, you don't need, if you have the skills to build it yourself, for sure you have the, the skills to rebuild it or to uh, fix it. There's another question from Pascal. Okay. It says, you didn't use a rudder at the rear of the animal to average the force on both sides, right? Wasn't your point of view regarding the use of such system? So you mean, uh, Pascal, you mean a dynamometer? Yeah, yeah. The swingle tree was there all the time. All the time. So the same way we play with the hitching point, well, the, the, draft, the angle of draft to make sure that we keep the 90 degrees angle for the full, for the full collars and 180 degrees for the breast collars. The, 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 the swingle tree was there all the time. So we tested these collars in, let's say, the state of the art conditions, okay? Because it was the only way for us to say collar one is better than collar two. We need to do it in the, 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 the best possible conditions. What we did on phase two is that actually we managed to develop a swingle tree where the dynamometer, so the load cell, and the reading, the data logger, the, all of them were embedded inside the swingle tree. So it's a normal swingle tree with lots of technology embedded inside. So there are no cables, there, there's, everything is embedded in the swingle tree. And the idea is that when you take, for example, this collar into the real world, you also take the swingle tree, and the only thing you have to do is turn on a key, and you allow the owner to work eight hours, 10 hours, whatever. And at the end of the day, you'll have a continuous reading of the efforts and the force the, the animal did. But yes, we, we try our best to eliminate any limiting factor that could affect the performance of the, the collars. Yeah, um, if I can ask uh, better my question, please. Um, you know, you have uh, two trails on the sides and uh, sometimes you have a steel bar at the rear of the animal mm -hmm. and you follow with only one trail to go. Yep. Yep. So this is what I call- Yeah, the, yeah the, the swingle tree. Yeah, we're talking about the Okay, same. thank you. I... It, was, it was there, it was there all the time. Good, thanks. Okay, I was going to ask you as well, Joao, are, are you planning in, in this project of, of testing uh, colors, uh, testing traditional colors from different parts of, of the world as well to know if you get a surprise like you got with the, okay. the V-shaped breast color to say yep. maybe this one is not good enough? We, we thought about that, okay? But the, the question is that there are not that many colors specifically designed for blankets. Okay, so sometimes it's difficult to find. That's why we work with Abel and with these commercial full colors because, because Abel was ready to reduce the size, okay? Let me, and the other aspect that is very important is that the only way you have to work with these pressure pads is under a very controlled environment because you have cables coming out of the animal and then you need, uh, we bought a military computer to put in the sled to make sure it was a strong one. And at the end of the week, one of the pressure pads was melted down. That was the expression that the company uses. You melted down the sensors and a USB entry of the military computer was broken. So, you know, working in the field with the animals can be quite tough, you know? So mm -hmm. uh, answering your question says, finding a way to move, except if you have a research center where the animals are and then people just send the callers and they test it, moving all this equipment is, is difficult. That's why the idea of the swingle tree without wires, without anything, you just replace one and you, you record it, you know? Okay. And I know Tamara is laughing because she had the same problem. She had some engineers developing all the, all the pressure pads for her mm -hmm. because in theory, these were resistant and after one week of trials, we need to send one back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> No, but I mean that it would be good, no? I mean, uh, you, you develop a, a, a color that can be used, but if somebody, instead of building that, wants to buy a, a commercial, a modern uh, commercial color, uh, it would be good to say, if you're going to use that for donkey, these models perform better than the other ones. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Because, well, the, as you say, it's difficult to find colors specific for donkeys. Yeah. And that's so going to be what I was saying. In that case, if someone wants to do that, the conclusions are simple. Make sure it's adjustable mm -hmm. because it will allow you to play more. Uh, the reason why this color four 
had some problems is even if it was designed specifically for this type of donkeys, uh, in some donkeys, the gap was bigger than the others, right? So make sure it's adjustable and make sure the padding system is thicker at the top and thinner at the, at the bottom. So it will shape this neck because this, this anatomy of the neck is pretty much common to all the donkeys, right? It's because all donkeys, they have this fat neck on the top and they have the depression and then they came, they came down. So that's, that's the only thing I can, I can tell you. And, and it's very important that the hitching point is adjustable, okay? And the reason why I'm saying this is because for horses, the correct hitching point corresponds to one third, two thirds. So if we have the neck of the animal, it should be one third to the lower, two thirds to the, to the top, right? In donkeys, it's 45, 55, okay? So if we just use a horse collar in a donkey, keeping the one third, two thirds relation for the hitching point, the most normal thing that is going to happen is that you will not be able to fit the collar into the neck because you'll have uh, twisting movements. So uh, an, an adjustable hitching point is very important in, in a collar. Okay, thank you. Just Pablo just asked another good question now. If you try different collars with the same animals and see our behavioral differences. Well, yes, these animals, uh, we have these seven animals that they all, all the animals use all the colors. So there was seven donkeys for eight colors, for 20%, for 40%, for two trials of 75 meters. And actually that was one of, in some of the studies, they have one, one horse, one color, horse two, color two, horse three, color three, and then they want to compare. In this case, no, all seven donkeys, uh, all eight donkeys used all seven colors. Okay. Actually, we are going to do it with 10 donkeys, but when we finish donkey number eight with all colors, we start seeing the problems with the pressure pad. And we had to, two of two donkeys came on holidays. They didn't work during the study because <laughs> they were the two last ones. But yeah, we test the, the, the tables of results were massive. Well, I think there were close to 300 readings. Per, per percentage of body weight per color. So, could you do you see sorry do you see any could you see that the animals were behaving differently uh, when they with, with you know with, with different colors that that give more pressure points or it, or the the duration was short enough that it was very short and we were very conservative with the percentage of body weight. Okay, as I said. 20 and 40 percent were enough for us to see differences in between colors, but uh, the real world is the real world, and in many parts of the world, animals pull twice their body weight. Okay, but so here we had to be conservative. You know, it's, it's a research study, and the welfare of the animals involved should be there. It's, uh, should be a priority at all costs. Okay. Well, if we don't have any. Any more questions? I think in a very good presentation, Joao. Thank you very much. We thank you a lot. And, and well, we encourage to see you again. No, in the next in the next meetings yep. in the next webinars we're going to. to and take, okay. please take a look to the to the if you search for Venki Academy, you will see the, the the courses. One of them is called uh, Harness and Working Equids, and it's pretty much. Uh, functions of the harness, problems that harness can cause to the animals, and how to work in agroforestry activities. And one of the colors that we use for those, actually, all the videos of the animals in action is with color one and color five. Those are the two we use for for this for this course. So please take a look. Okay, thank you very much, yeah. Ron. Thank, thank you. you. Okay. Have a good bye evening, bye. all of you. Bye. Bye. -bye.